All right, salutations people who watch things on the internet. Sunday night, time for another Doctor Who review. Go subscribe, go check out the last Do or Do Not where I review the movie Palm Wonderful Presents the Greatest Movie Ever Sold. And here's last week's Doctor Who. Uh, you can check out the review there. So this week's episode had a lot kind of going for it, at least beforehand. And, you know, it was a, a Neil Gaiman episode. It was a, a episode number four when episode number three was kind of... Eh, I, I know some people kind of really like the whole pirate thing, and then, you know, a, a bunch of other people were kind of just like, eh, it's a self-contained episode, it almost feels like a filler episode. A uh, shout-out to my friends uh, Rudy and Liz, who do an awesome podcast uh, that I knew about that I just started listening to called Tiny Whiny, and I'll put a link uh, down in the description for their podcast, and uh, hopefully we'll be going back and forth with them, because I, I think we're, the three of us are kind of on the same line when it comes to Doctor Who. But this week's The Doctor's Wife, the title... It, the spoilers alert, it, it has to be said at this point, totally misleading, I think. So there's a lot of things going on in this episode that don't necessarily make sense, but may be alluding to some things that will or will not happen in the future and uh, a lot of other things. So first off, um, Neil Gaiman, great comic book writer and, and novelist and you know, we, we see him pinning this episode of Doctor Who, which I think has its advantages and disadvantages for the fact that Neil may not be as good at writing screenplays and, and TV and, and movies because it's a different format than writing a comic book or a novel where you have time and, and plenty of words to be descriptive and, and, and tell these kind of bigger RG stories. And here we're compressed into like a 42-minute Doctor Who episode, which has its own cat in a bag. But at the same time, I think he was given some license to do some interesting things. I'm sure they kind of painted like a framework and then just said, Neil, go nuts. Do do what you want to do. Explore these other areas of the Doctor, which we haven't seen before. Set it in a different universe, for crying out loud. That, that first of all, I just didn't almost understand why they were leaving their own universe other than the fact that it was the voices of the Time Lords and these little... SOS boxes that end up showing up, and I'm not even sure how that one got away from the junk planet that it was traveling on to get the Doctor to come, and then it also alludes to the fact that, uh, this is going to be a long one, um, the fact that uh, these messages may or may not have been from the time when the Doctor himself actually destroyed the rest of the Time Lords and they got lost. So there's a lot to think about in terms of just what this planet is, who the house is, and these people who serve the house. The fact that an Ood's there, I think, is just tying it back into the larger Doctor Who universe and that this Ood was somehow able to be reprogrammed to be subservient to this master. What I really appreciated about Neil Gaiman's understanding of the Doctor is it took the Doctor to some deeper, deeper emotional levels that we haven't seen before. We see him be not only super lost and, and just unable to figure out what happens next, like we see this vulnerability where he has no idea what's going on, and at the same time we see him being very emotional um, about the Time Lords and what he's done. And there's that great line about where, where Amy asks him if, you, if it's about being forgiven. And, and there's just a great interchange about the inner workings of the Doctor and how he perceives all the space and time that goes on there. I notice I scratch my nose a lot during these. Anyways, side note. Um, the f let's see. Let's let's kind of skip over the fact that it was a little weird and the the TARDIS got hijacked and that the soul of the TARDIS ended up into a woman's body, which he calls sexy, an old girl. And uh, my my roommate Jenny pointed out that uh, we see some parallels here, and this this falls into the speculation aspect of uh, why it was titled The Doctor's Wife, why there was literally no mention of, of River Song, but we'll get back to that, and kind of how the TARDIS, in a lot of ways, is like The Doctor's Wife because they're stuck together, and then this first time that we've ever got to hear the internal monologue of what the TARDIS thinks of the Doctor. So there, there's some parallels there, and so... On a large overhand scale, this episode was not about the Doctor's Wife, but I think in a lot of speculative and, and undercurrent ways, it was. And let's just kind of finish out the, the rest of the just normal storyline before we get to talking about some of the things that are, are dug in there. So, 
you know, really kind of weird that the once the Amy and Rory are back on the TARDIS, that it's really playing these mind games with them, and I'm not sure if that's kind of going back to the Dream Lord episode from Season 5, and just really playing up the fact that Rory and Amy are very much humans and they very much don't understand how the Doctor will work. They've, they've seen the littlest glimpse of his his world and his understanding and the, the internal workings of the TARDIS and here, you know, the, the house is using the TARDIS against them and playing off Amy's fear of losing Rory and uh, how much of a bond that it feels like they're really trying to establish between Rory and Amy which feels a little forced at some times, but there was that little moment at the end where they wanted their, their own bed instead of bunk beds, and that was a little cheeky, uh, to use a British word there. And um, so it was very interesting to see kind of that picture being painted of how little Amy and Rory really understand about who the Doctor is and how Amy at some point thinks she hasn't figured out, and she's like, you know, when you have that look, that really means you're scared kind of thing. Um, or I can't even remember the exact moment. But, but she points something about out about his personality that, that does click. But at the same time, she still has no idea about who this man is and, and what he's done and what he's been through and, and how to understand this all. So the, the episode as a whole, very, very nicely cohesive together. I, I You know, the very first scene was a mention of, of the fact that sidebar between Amy and Rory about... The Doctor going to die, which felt odd compared to the bookend at the la the end of episode three, where they kind of threw in that extra scene where Amy had to remind us that yes, we're thinking about the Doctor and, and the, his mortality and being able to tell him. So it was weird because to know that episode three was supposed to happen further down the line and it kind of got slotted up in there. So you have these two little reminders that were right next to each other. If you were gonna watch episode three straight into episode four, and it was very fresh on my mind to go, oh, they're reminding us again when this episode really has nothing to do with that storyline in of itself. So, interesting note there. So, overall, a very good episode because I think we understand the TARDIS-Doctor relationship a little bit more, and it's a very intriguing relationship, and I, there's lots of little tidbits about how she thinks she hijacked him and he thinks he hijacked her and how they're always working together and stuff like that but let me just get into some of the speculative things and especially when the TARDIS was uh you know telepathically linked and kind of knew things ahead of time she tells Rory something at the end about uh I can't even remember the exact quote and you know what I'm talking about about the uh the the forest needing water or there is water in the forest but it is a river I can't remember the exact quote, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, you know, I don't know if you were one of those people who just saw that and thought literal about forests and water and, and rivers, or if you made the uh, analogy that that could be talking about River Song and something that's going to happen later in this season that has to do with River Song, which then in sense would make sense why the episode is called The Doctor's Wife, if River Song really is The Doctor's Wife. So there's a lot of that going on. Um... I guess we can get speculative about the whole Amy River baby doctor thing and that if uh, the TARDIS really can breathe life into people and we saw that the time baby spewed out TARDIS so we could go a step further and say that uh, the baby is a part of the TARDIS which is actually River Song which is actually Amy's baby so Amy gives birth to River Song who is the TARDIS and that is how they understand the whole timeline of things so that's extremely speculative and I'm not sure what I think about that but in in some ways it, it could make sense if we're drawing the parallel that the TARDIS is the Doctor's wife and we know the fact that the Doctor's wife is River Song and even more fueling that fire the first thing that the uh, once the TARDIS inhabits the woman is she says goodbye think about it. and the last thing that she says to the Doctor before she vanishes completely is hello and so then we're now talking about the reverse to forward, Dr. River overlap that happens where the Doctor and River, you guys all know what I'm talking about if you've been watching Doctor Who. So, very, very interesting, I think, peaks about what we may be doing, and we may have more confirmation that this whole Amy River, Dr. Tardis, baby thing is really going to tie itself together, and I still think that there's a slight possibility rivers inside the suit which may, may now make more sense
that uh, when she talks about back in the uh, the episode where we first or the Weeping Angels when they're in the cavern and the spaceship is crashed, uh, we were talking about how she just killed a very good man. Very interesting, very very interesting. So painted a lot of pictures. I, I can't even remember what the next episode is called. So we only have three more episodes before. We take the summer hiatus, and so I think some things are going to be built up. Uh, oh, we saw the preview of the next episode, obviously, uh, where they're in some kind of dungeon, and people are taking over, and there's this matter goo that has a face very much like the uh, statues back from the library, back from David Tennant, back when River Song dies. I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of parallels that are going on. There's also a point where... It seems that the Doctor is getting sucked into the goo, so we may have a second Doctor, possibly a fake Doctor, uh, alongside the real Doctor. So there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to the next show. One thing that I do want to talk about, and I'll stop and take a breath, is something that uh, Rudy and Liz brought up in their podcast last week, is the fact that most of the UK thinks of, the, of Doctor Who as a kid's program. And something I've never really thought about because I've just started watching Doctor Who obviously as an adult and I see it as a sci-fi show and I see it very much as just enjoyable. But uh, this larger conversation about how this last couple seasons have been very dark and very complicated and like these overarching storylines are very not kid-friendly when traditionally in the UK Doctor Who is seen as a kid's show which also kind of transitions into the fact that I've been thinking very much that this show is being written more and more for a U.S. audience and and trying to push itself as a mainstream sci-fi show for a U.S. audience, which I think Russell T. Davies is kind of going for that. Like, I think he kind of wants to skirt away from the fact that it's been seen as a kid's show and it's kind of fun and it's quirky, but I, I think he really has a, a knack that he wants to take it to this other level and make it more serious, and then also make it more approachable for the U.S. audience. I don't, I don't know if he's pandering to the U.S. audience, but there's definitely a lot of influence into the U.S. market and the way we as Americans think about uh, TV shows. And there's lots of comments on on last week's uh, review about the way we think and and how U.S. shows are very much cliffhanger and big endings, and we're not sure what's going to happen next. And in the U.K. is more about. These are confined episodes, and there's not so much of a through story storyline and stuff like that. And so we're seeing this mishmash of this very clear through storyline that's happening through season six of Doctor Who, and uh, still kind of battling trying to be these little self-contained episodes by themselves. So very, very interesting to think about. So I'm excited to see where the season goes, and I'm really not sure how I'm going to take uh, a, a big break between spring and fall because. It's a, it's a two-part episode, very clearly going to be a giant cliffhanger episode. Um, I wonder if we'll get back to the point where the Doctor dies, and then we find out just enough information not to know anything until the fall. So uh, I, I want to know what you guys think. I want to know, speculate away. Go, go on this whole new Amy River, Doctor Time Child, TARDIS theory that's going on. Um, speculate about um, the next episode and the... the, the the goo that creates matter, that's a whole different thing. The fact that the Doctor built a second TARDIS out of nothing, out of broken TARDIS parts, and the fact that there's this whole other universe where something has killed a bunch of Time Lords, that's even just something we didn't even broach, but something bigger to think about that I think Neil Gaiman kind of just painted this little picture that we may never see again, because uh, Russell T. Davies is going to literally suck us back into the conformed Doctor Who universe, and we just spent a little time in this outer other universe for this one episode. So uh, please go subscribe if you haven't, leave some comments, uh, check out Timey Wimey, and we'll see you guys again next week, and we're going to go real close for the adios. Adios.